Coming up today, South Korea's foreign and defense chiefs are in Washington for annual talks with their American counterparts. Discussions will mostly revolve around countering an aggressive North Korea. The National Assembly Committee is holding a closed-door audit of South Korea's intelligence agency. Lawmakers are expected to quiz officials on North Korea's next moves after the regime's recent nuclear and missile tests. Plus, the United Nations warns that an unprecedented humanitarian crisis looms in Mosul as Iraqi government forces gear up to drive ISIS fighters out of that city. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Wednesday, the 19th of October. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Arirang TV. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this afternoon, South Korea and the United States are set for high-level talks on strengthening their joint deterrence measures against North Korea. The foreign and defense ministers of the two allies will meet in Washington over the next two days. Connie Kim starts us off. South Korea's foreign and defense ministers have kicked off their official visit to Washington by paying tribute at the Korean War Veterans Memorial. During their visit to the U.S., a foreign minister Yoon Byung-se and defense minister Han Min-gu will seek response measures against North Korea's nuclear threats. A so-called 2 plus 2 meeting will be held on Wednesday with the two South Korean ministers and their U.S. counterparts, Secretary of State John Kerry and Defense Secretary Ashton Carter. Topping the agenda are ways to bring out a strong U.N. Security Council resolution and formulate additional ways for Seoul and Washington to further pressure Pyongyang. We will focus on putting our heads together to ensure the sanctions on North Korea are the strongest they can be. Minister Yoon and Secretary Kerry are set to hold a joint press conference following their talks. On the following day, the two defense chiefs are set to discuss Washington's extended deterrence over South Korea, under which the U.S. will mobilize all of its military assets to defend the country in a time of crisis. Having U.S. strategic assets deployed on the Korean Peninsula at all times will reportedly be discussed during the defense talks. Carter hinted at such plans in the latest issue of Foreign Affairs on Tuesday. He said Washington is continuing to deploy some of its most advanced capabilities, including F-22 and F-35 stealth fighter jets and maritime patrol aircraft under the second phase of the Obama administration's rebalance to Asia. Connie Kim, Adidas News. Now, the deputy foreign ministers of South Korea and China are slated to hold talks later today on regional and global issues. Deputy Foreign Minister for Political Affairs Kim Hyung-jin will meet with his Chinese counterpart Kong Shuian Yu in Seoul this afternoon. Seoul's foreign ministry says the talks will address the current situation on the Korean peninsula. Rising tensions over Chinese vessels fishing illegally in Korean waters could also be on the agenda as well. The Chinese diplomat who is in South Korea for a three-day visit will also meet with Korea's Vice Foreign Minister Im Sung Nam on Thursday to further address issues of mutual concern. China and Russia have reportedly agreed to hold regular joint missile defense drills in response to the upcoming deployment of the THAAD missile defense system on the Korean peninsula. A Russian daily reported on Tuesday quoting senior Chinese foreign affairs officials that the two countries will hold regular computer-aided missile defense drills. The first such of these drills were held back in May. The officials said the THAAD deployment disrupts the strategic balance in the region and heightens tensions, raising the need for greater military cooperation between the two countries. They stress that any measures taken to resolve issues on the Korean Peninsula should satisfy all stakeholders in the region and should primarily be decided through negotiations. President Park Geun-hye attended the groundbreaking ceremony for a high-tech materials factory at the Gumi in, uh, National Industrial Complex in Gyeongsangbuk-do province earlier today. The visit is part of the president's efforts to see how her policies are working out in the field. While she was there, President Park also toured the complex, which is part of an initiative to transform smart factories and support manufacturing innovation. President Park spoke about the need to lead the fourth industrial revolution and foster new industries, particularly 
new materials while also encouraging academic and industrial cooperation on customised job training and job creation for young people. Now, most of this year's parliamentary audit is over, but the National Assembly's Intelligence Committee is conducting its audit today on South Korea's intelligence agency. The audit session is being held behind closed doors at the National Intelligence Services headquarters in southern Seoul. The session is expected to focus on North Korea's recent provocations, including its fifth nuclear test, which happened last month, and last weekend's failed ballistic missile launch. Lawmakers are expected to quiz senior intelligence officials on the North's nuclear capabilities and the regime's latest moves. Another likely topic is the recent controversy over claims the former Nomi Hun administration asked North Korea's opinion before voting on a 2007 UN resolution on the North's human rights violations, as the authenticity of the former foreign minister's account has been called into question by some lawmakers might press to see if the NIS has some records on the situation. The four-month-long investigation into Korea's fifth largest conglomerate, Lotte Group, has technically come to an end, with the results of the probe to be announced later this afternoon. Prosecutors decided they will indict but not detain the group's chairman, Shin Dong-bin, as well as his elder brother, Dong-ju, and their father and the group's founder, Shin Gyuk ho this comes after the court rejected the prosecution's request to arrest the group's chairman on embezzlement charges late last month. They will be charged with tax evasion, embezzlement and breach of trust. The founder's de facto wife, Sol Mi Gyeong, as well as his daughter, Shin Young Ja, were also earlier indicted on charges of tax evasion. The probe into the group launched back in June with some 10 affiliates raided and about 500 of Lotte's executive and staff summoned by prosecutors either as suspects or witnesses. Korea's producer prices have risen for the second straight month on the back of spiking agricultural goods prices. The Bank of Korea says the producer price index rose 0.2 percent on month to 99.2 in September. The price index has a baseline of 100 and refers to 2010 price levels. The producer price for agricultural goods rose 5.4 percent compared to the previous month, hitting around 120. An official from the central bank said prices shot up amid poor harvest due to the record-breaking summer heat wave. The index for animal products and fishery products rose 2.5 percent. Now, with less than three weeks to go before the U.S. presidential election, a new poll shows Hillary Clinton holds a decisive advantage over Donald Trump in the competition for votes in the Electoral College. Our Kim Mogyan tells us more. The poll released on Tuesday was jointly conducted by the Washington Post and Survey Monkey on 15 battleground states. The results show Clinton leads in enough swing states to put her comfortably over the 270 majority needed to win the November 8th election. The polls say Clinton holds a lead of four points among likely voters in states that add up to 304 electoral votes, while Trump has the advantage in states with an estimated electoral vote that totals 138. Arizona, Florida, Ohio and Texas, which together account for 96 electoral votes, remain as toss-ups. The results are based on ballot tests that include Libertarian Party nominee Gary Johnson and the Green Party's Jill Stein. The poll was conducted online from October 8th to the 16th on more than 17,000 likely voters. Meanwhile, regarding the latest scandal rocking Clinton's campaign, President Obama says claims of collusion between the FBI and State Department officials over the classification of an email on Clinton's private server were just not true. During a news conference at the White House, Obama said some of the more sensational implications or appearances weren't based on actual events. In interview notes released this week by the FBI, an unidentified bureau official said he heard secondhand that the State Department had offered a quid pro quo in exchange for declassifying an email. On Donald Trump's suggestions the presidential election is rigged, Obama said the Republican candidate should stop whining. Obama said Trump's actions do not show the kind of leadership and toughness Americans want in their president. Kim Mogan, Arirang News. Now, staying with international news, it's been just two days since the start of an operation to retake Mosul from the Islamic State militant group. 
But there are already rising concerns about the city's citizens who are trapped in what the UN says could become the world's most complex humanitarian crisis. Huang Ho Jun with the details. In the Islamic State held city of Mosul, snipers, landmines, hunger, and thirst await those attempting to leave. Staying, however, keeps them in the snare of the militant group, notorious for using civilians as shields in battle. Either way, Mosul residents are trapped, and the campaign to retake the city could drag on for months. The UN's Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs predicts the humanitarian operation in Mosul could be the world's largest and most complex of 2016. By UN estimates, the military campaign is expected to impact the city's entire population of approximately 1.5 million. About 200,000 people are expected to flee their homes in the first weeks of the campaign, but only 60,000 can be accommodated in the emergency tent camps set up in areas nearby. At least 250,000 more tents are under construction or planned. In addition, Reuters reported Tuesday the U.S. expects ISIS to use chemical weapons in the course of the offensive. More than 98,000 people, including U.S. soldiers and Iraqi security forces, are engaged in the fight against approximately 5,000 ISIS fighters. U.S. President Barack Obama on Tuesday acknowledged there is a difficult fight ahead, but asserted that the coalition will ultimately be successful. The International Organization for Migration says the aid effort could cost an estimated 347 million U.S. dollars, but only half of that amount has been raised so far. Meanwhile, Julian King, the EU Commissioner for the Security Union, has urged European countries to prepare for returning jihadists if the Islamic State is driven out of Mosul. Speaking to a German newspaper on Tuesday, he said Europe must boost its border defense and increase its resilience to terrorism, stressing the threat posed by even a small number of ISIS members returning to Europe could be very serious. Raffaello Pantucci, the director of international security studies at the Royal United Service Institute, warned that ISIS has shown the capacity to send fighters back hidden among refugees entering Europe. Huang Wujun, Arirang News. Now, more suspected cases of Zika-related microcephaly in babies are being reported in Brazil. In the northeast of the country, one baby was confirmed to have microcephaly and three were categorized as suspected cases. Another 110 babies are undergoing testing for the virus. Experts say the virus could spread further later this year, especially as the weather gets hotter. According to Brazilian health authorities, there are now over 2,000 confirmed cases of microcephaly caused by Zika in Brazil, and 3,000 cases are still being looked into. Clinical trials for a vaccine are scheduled for November. If successful, health authorities say the vaccine can be distributed within the next three years. Now, China's manned spacecraft, the Shenzhou 11, has docked at the Tiangong 2 space lab. This, ma this makes China the third country after the United States and Russia to complete docking procedures in space. According to China's Xinhua News Agency, the Shenzhou 11 passed over southwest China on Wednesday morning at an altitude of 393 kilometers, and the two Chinese astronauts on board have entered the space Lab. The astronauts will now begin their month-long mission, the longest in space ever for China. During that time, they'll conduct a series of experiments aimed at advancing China's ambitions in space. Now, back here in Korea, one person has been killed and four slightly injured in an explosion at a chemical factory in Gyeongsangbuk-do province. The 46-year-old victim, identified only by his surname Park, was taken to the nearby hospital but later died from his injuries. The local fire department says the blast occurred at around 9.20 a.m. Korea time at the Star Chemical Factory located in the third cluster of the Gumi uh, National Industrial Complex. The factory in question shut down in 2013 and the five workers were removing raw material tanks at the time of the blast. The resulting fire has now been extinguished and there were no chemicals leaked into the environment. 
Korea is going to hold its largest ever nationwide earthquake drill this afternoon to raise preparedness following last month's record-breaking 5.8 magnitude quake in the southeastern city of Gyeongju. The Ministry of Public Safety and Security says the drill, which will last 20 minutes, begins at 2 p.m. local time in just under two hours from now. Daycare centers, schools, government offices and public institutions are obligated to follow the radio broadcast instructions and take part in the drill. Cars and buses will be required to stop where they are for five minutes as well. Ulsan and Jeju Island, two areas severely hit by Typhoon Chaba in early October. They, however, are excluded from the drill. Well, that's all we have for now on this Wednesday lunchtime here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom, and thank you as always for tuning in. We will be back throughout the day with more newscasts. Our next scheduled bulletin is coming up at 2 p.m. Korea time. So until then, goodbye.